The first Pokemon movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, is usually regarded as one of the best. But are you sure you've seen the whole thing? Mewtwo's Birth, or The Uncut Story of Mewtwo's Origin, was an additional short that serves as a prequel to the story, depicting Mewtwo's early days. It originally started as a Japanese radio drama to serve as a prequel to Mewtwo Strikes Back the movie. Once it was adapted into an anime format after a year, it was included in later home releases in Japan. We didn't get it in English until the home release of Mewtwo Returns, so it wasn't even really included where it should have been. But at least it was a prequel included with the sequel instead of it being thrown into whatever other English release came out at the time. But seeing as it's Mewtwo's birthday, let's go ahead and rewatch it. Blockbuster presents Mew versus Mewtwo in the ultimate Pokemon showdown. You can rent it now on video cassette and DVD. Pokemon, the first movie. You'll also get a sneak peek of Pokemon the Movie 2000 and the story of Mewtwo's origin. Pokemon, the first movie rated PG. You can catch it all on video cassette and DVD from Blockbuster and Warner Home Video. Mewtwo Strikes Back gives us a good enough origin of Mewtwo, establishing that researchers, led by Dr. Fuji, funded by Team Rocket's Giovanni, uncovered a Mew fossil from deep in the jungle and then cloned Mew from that. But in Mewtwo's birth, we follow Mewtwo in his younger days. Tell all those other babies to hit the road because baby Mewtwo was first and is here to stay. Sayonara. I'm the baby now. But from this, we see Mewtwo gaining consciousness at a younger age and being just as confused with his existence as he would be later on. Through telepathy, he communicates with the other four clones in the same laboratory. Bulbasaur 2, Squirtle 2, Charmander 2, and Amber 2. I like the idea of having the other Pokemon he first meets being the Kanto starters because those would be the same Pokemon he later clones himself. But of course, one of these things is not like the other, and that's because we're given a deeper look into Dr. Fuji, who has become obsessed with cloning his deceased daughter to the point that his wife left him. But we at least now have some motivation as to why he's taken funding from Giovanni, a win-win scenario, if he's successful. His research is funded and he could potentially bring back his daughter while Giovanni gets the most powerful Pokemon. On one hand, I think this is an interesting development that makes Dr. Fuji more of a character, but in a way, I feel like it diminishes the moment later on where a grown-up Mewtwo finally awakens. It's a great moment because he comes out immediately asking questions about his existence being disappointed by the dreary lab he's in when he would constantly dream of flying in nature. The scientists are so caught up with their own achievements, congratulating each other, and even begin to discuss putting Mewtwo in a cage. Sure, in the original, Dr. Fuji isn't really a deep character, but he serves as a commentary on humans' involvement with creating life, and how it's done for their sake rather than the sake of the creation. When they mention that Mewtwo is the only clone to survive, it implies there could have been dozens of other Mewtwo that didn't making him just another number in their eyes. But we now know exactly how many clones there were before and what they were. But really, I suppose you could say that he and the other scientists might have eventually reached this point of disillusionment, caring only about the end result to prove their own theories after the results of the initial experiment, which we better get back to. The four clones have a fun little experience together in locations of Amber 2's memories, until the clones start disappearing from the dream world, and we know that they didn't survive outside when we see their empty tubes. I do like how it just cuts to this visual because we don't see them dissolving or anything in the real world. It's very likely that as soon as their clones lost life, their bodies were removed and disposed of, which does help contribute to the overall coldness of the scientist that I discussed. Amber 2 is the last to pass and she leaves Mewtwo telling him to remember that life is wonderful, but Mewtwo only having known her for a short time and having little knowledge of the concept of life probably wouldn't even know what to do with that. He understandably gets upset not knowing how to process all of these emotions that he's feeling for the first time. So he's administered with something that would suppress his memory. And I know this is an easy way to fit this short in as a prequel, but lingering forgotten memories were a part of Mewtwo anyway in the original movie, when he would have memories of being a Mew out in the wild. 
So it does work because he's been told that life is wonderful and he has been shown kindness by a human. He did forget this, but it still lived on in his subconscious, contributing to his root awakening later on. Just adding on to the several lingering memories that added on to the contrast of the reality that he experienced when he woke up. But when it comes down to it, I think this short gives the most to Dr. Fuji. Sure, we get to see a cute little baby Mewtwo and you could consider these to be important pieces of his backstory, but really it just recontextualizes Dr. Fuji's ambitions. And if I'm being honest, I actually don't think the short as a whole is necessary. The fact that it wasn't included originally, and the main movie flows so well without it, are some decent enough evidence. I really think it works best as supplemental material as a short on its own. Should it be included in the main runtime of Mewtwo Strikes Back? It could, but I would personally say no. It was even left out of the remake Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution. I may just be a tad biased, the fact being that Mewtwo's Awakening is actually my favorite scene in all of Pokemon, and I think it could potentially negatively impact it. But those are just some of my thoughts. Whatever anyone else might think, we can at least all agree that it's a piece of Mewtwo's origin. Every Friday at 5, Toonami's breaking off movies for the masses. Next Friday, science has finally gone too far. You are greater than you, improved through the power of human ingenuity. A prehistoric Pokemon has been cloned and is out of control. Can Ash stop Mewtwo from stealing their Pokemon and taking over the world? Pokemon, the first movie, next Friday at 5. Don't fool with Mother Nature. But anyway, hey, this is GatorX, and let me know what you think. Have you ever seen Mewtwo's birth or the uncut origin or the uncut origin of Mewtwo's story? I think that's what it was called. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's got two different titles, but uh, yeah, you know, interesting little short. Again, only 10 minutes, and technically, yeah, you can fit it into the main plot, to the main story or the main runtime of Mewtwo Strikes Back. But overall, it's it's interesting. I do like it. I do enjoy it, but. As I mentioned, Mewtwo's Awakening in the original movie is one of my favorite scenes in all of Pokemon. Actually, my probably favorite scene in all of Pokemon. And I think it just really works just so well as it is. But again, you know, just supplemental material. As it's Mewtwo's birthday, it was just a cool thing to look back at as recently. Actually, I think for the past few years, I've been making at least a Mewtwo-related video during Mewtwo's birthday every year, so this one honestly I think is the best one that I've done so far, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below overall about Mewtwo's birth and I guess Mewtwo in general. Uh, hopefully we'll be talking about the movies more so next month. This again was about a short, so it's a little uh, smaller, but uh, we've also got the gaming channel that's going to be hopefully rebooting, hopefully uh, starting back up again, so you can check that out. It's going to be iCard and Card. I've got a video going up today, which is just really cool. I'm very, very happy with how it turned out, so hopefully I can turn out more in that same quality. It's uh, today's Pokemon, at least, that I'm playing over there, but if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to show your support. You can enable notifications by clicking that bell icon next to the subscribe button. If you thought this video is great and you're able to, you can click the applause button as well if you'd like to uh, assist in supporting the channel. Anyway, this has been Gatorx. Have a nice day.